Hi everyone, it's Tiffany Sharp, and today I'm here with you on day two of Junk Journal July. Um, I wanted to thank Meg for inviting me again for Junk Journal. Well, I've never done Junk Journal July, but I have done Junk Journal January of this year, which was a lot of fun. So it, um, I'm so happy to be with you guys again today. Um, so my word and the word for day two is pop of color. So that's why you see these over here. These are going to be my pop of color and I'm going to use them as a focal point for a journal spread with you today. They are already done. I have made them with watercolors and um, just like a loose kind of a botanical leaf. They're, they're all leaves. These, these are fan palm leaves and I don't know what those leaves, <laughs> they're just generic leaves. <laughs> so I just like to play around with leaves and leaf shapes when I watercolor. So this is what I pulled out from my stash because they're bright, they're fun, um, they're summery, and of course they have that pop of color. And I thought it would be great to put them on a background, which was very neutral. So I have my black and white uh, collage spotter here that I'm just going to be tearing up into bits to make the background and some other supplies that you'll need are probably scissors I'm going to be using uh, this uhu glue stick and maybe a paper trimmer if you're using a lot of paper um, possibly get a paper trimmer out. Actually, I don't know that I'll be using that. I've got very few papers. But the reason why I wanted my trimmer out is, was because I have a specific idea of what I want to make. Of course, I'm not going to limit myself to just these supplies. I might pull out more supplies later. We'll see how this goes. It's never um, like a sure thing until I get going. I don't know about you guys, but it's hard for me to plan everything out completely. The reason why I even have this plan was I was looking in one of my circle journals um, just for inspiration, which I like to do a lot. Let me find, um, find the one that I was thinking of. And I'll be working in one of these pages too because these, I always like to work in my current journal, the latest journal I've made, and I made um, these circular journals, which I did put together a class on how to make these. They're so much fun to work in. They're just a little different than working in a rectangular journal. I find that um, it really like makes me think in a different way. So this is the page that I was thinking of not recreating, but looking at for inspiration. Because what I liked is the combination of the circle outline with the straight edges in the center. Instead of, like if you're working in a rectangular journal, it might be fun if you made a circle on yours. Well, of course, one of my focal points is kind of circular. Oh gosh, that looks so good right there. <laughs> so you see why I was inspired by this page. Um, so let me find a page I want to work in. I think this book or this um, size page might be better than this one, but I don't know. We'll see. I might, I might move on to that one. Um, Finding the right page to begin with sometimes is the hardest, huh? Okay, you know what? I, I like this page because these watercolor swatches kind of work with the focal points. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this page because a lot of my fodder here is black and white. Um, so it's July. Is it July? Yeah, it's July second, and I'm filming this in June, and I happen to have these on my desk, which is <laughs> how I work. I just kind of pull from what I have sitting nearby generally for these journals because you know what it's it's nice to use up leftover scraps and it's nice to um not plan stuff out you know like super like have a lot of um what am i trying to say the overthink there we go okay <laughs> I really had to overthink there to come up with that word. But yeah, it's really nice when I can just pull from what I have around me, be inspired by what I have around me, and not overthink too much. Oh, this is, I do want to trim up to get some nice crisp edges. Normally I tear. You saw me almost tearing this piece, and that's typically what I would do. But, like I said, I was inspired by the clean edges on the inside of that one page. So let me try to do that part at least. Um, yeah, like that. And so gather what you have. You can see that I'm using inside of envelopes. These are tapes that I've made. Um, I, I was just saying actually before I got sidetracked that for me, I'm working on this in June and I just finished up my month of fodder school, which was May. And we made some of these tapes in fodder school and I have these sitting around so I might as well use them I think that's a good accent piece for later but let me try to create like the bigger a kind of like a puzzle put together kind of a puzzle for the background part first and then I'll add in these tapes I'm just gonna start gluing because what could go wrong with working that way? <laughs> what could go wrong with um, working with all black and white? Not a lot. So I'm feeling pretty confident with just gluing down, gluing everywhere to begin with. Should get a scratch piece of paper out. Um, I'm not gonna. just got a little bit of glue here so yeah I, I mean get out a piece of scratch paper to do your gluing on I'm gonna do that there we go I do like this one too paper that I've stamped on 
that um, I made these stamps and I want to go over the entire back of it with glue. It works better with a matte medium, but you know what? I tend to not enjoy working with matte medium because it's it just gets everywhere. I like to use the, the dry glue like glue stick because it's uh, easier. So what I do is just make sure I put a pretty good amount of glue on the back of this and then it will maybe sometimes <laughs> become a little bit more translucent because if you use matte medium on tissue paper generally a lot of this background the white part of the tissue paper will just kind of go away which it does a little bit to some extent using this glue stick but not as much, but I think that looks fine. Um, I'm gonna trim all this stuff away later, so I'll worry about that later. And now I can use some of these just to kind of overlap. I'm not too concerned at this point where my focal point would be, but um, if you wanna leave <clears throat> kind of a clear space, if you have a focal point in mind, might be a good time to think about that. Yeah, I, I think it'll work out for me because I have, a couple of large pieces that are mostly white, black on white, and now I'm just adding the accent pieces which are very dark. So if I limit myself to just smaller strips of this dark color, I think it should be okay. I think. And maybe even, maybe I'll bring in some of this color. This pale pink color just to, I mean, that's kind of a, a neutral, right? Let's work on this end. So this is a great time to get out your washi tape in any colors really, but like I have a few sets of washi tape where one of them is like a blue and white set. So it'd be fun to stick my blue and white washies on the background and then add a contrasting focal point. Now, because I'm using black and white, it's super easy. I can use any bright colors for my pop of color, but I would say if I were using something like all blues in the background, I would want to look at choosing something like, um, like a complementary color to blue. So the opposite, so the opposite of the color wheel to blue is orange. So orange would like really pop out against a blue background, which is what we're trying to do today, right? Pop of color, or it could all just be neutrals, black and whites. Um, originally I thought I was gonna use this page because I do love the neutral, um, the vintage, what is that? Like a tan yellowish, <laughs> that vintage paper color. You know what I'm talking about? I love that and such a good neutral. So I could see doing a collage with all vintage papers and then throwing in 
one bright color, which I have tried to work that way for a long time. I mean, <laughs> for like ever since I started junk journaling, I think that was my goal at the very, very beginning was to try to incorporate vintage neutrals with a nice pop of bright color. And so when I saw that, one of the words, one of the prompts for this month was pop of color. I was like, I have to have that one. I definitely felt like that was me. All right, I'm, I'm gonna stop there and see what that looks like before it, before the background gets too busy. Although I do feel like if everything in the background is neutral, it it um, is okay to be kind of busy. So I'm just gonna cut around here, trim to where the edges of my circular book is. Like I said, I just love working in these circles for these circle books. Um, but you know, the main thing I love is actually working in a, a journal that I've made. I um, feel like just working in pages that you've selected yourself and in a book that you've put together, no matter what size, you know, you can, you can work in any shape book and any size book. And when you make your own journal, you're getting the size and shape that you prefer to work in or trying out something. And I think that is the key to loving doing art journaling is having a good, good journal to work in. All right, I do love this one, but it's not covering up enough of this, I don't think. Or maybe it is. Let me look on the let me look on the phone. I have to audition them all. Sorry. Sorry if you liked that one. We got to try them all out in all the different ways, right? And maybe I have to look at choosing a different focal point. This one, gosh, I love the shape of this, but I, if I would have planned better, I would have put this one down here and put this white up here so that the, the palm fronds or whatever, the leaf part wasn't so busy against that background. It's just a little too busy there for me. So I can either get some white and cover over that, or I can just choose a different focal point, which is what I'm tending to do. All right. Is that enough of a pop of color? Or do we wanna go with this? I'm, I'm really feeling this one. I'm really feeling this one, you guys, so. Now the question is, do I need a little more? Kind of feel like I do. I feel like I need a little more of this color now that I've added in one piece, but maybe not. Maybe one is okay. Possibly this. like this grungy piece. It's very abstract. I'll try it. I 
Um, I think I made this one on a jelly plate, this tape. I was just playing around on, on a jelly plate to make it, but I didn't love it, but now I'm seeing a potential for its use here in something like this, where a little bit of abstract something might be nice. I like that. I'm going to trim that off. Or, you know what I should have done? I might just do this anyway. I'm going to just fold it to the back. Now I've already got just a little something started on the back of that. <laughs> Okay, last thing I'm going to do is, because I have stitching around this page and I don't want all my stitching to disappear, I'm gonna grab a sand, sanding block. Here we go, whoops. I'm gonna grab a few other things that was stuck on there and I'm just gonna sand just the edges here to bring my um, stitching up to the front. Oh, this is interesting. Um, sanding on top of tissue paper has, oh yeah, it just broke right through that tissue paper. Hmm. Did not know that would happen. That's kind of cool. I like it. It's, no, it's not sanding off my stitches, okay. Even if it were, I'd, I would be very cool with that. I'd be happy with that, actually. I like roughing up my journals. <laughs> Just gives it some character. I think I broke apart some of the stitches right here, but I, I like that. It's, it's like, it's made my threads kind of fuzzy. There we go, so can you see that? It's defined my stitches just a little bit. It's not perfect, but you can definitely see where the stitches are. And you know, I, I, like it. I like it very subtle like that. I don't think I wanna highlight it or anything. And then here's some color. Do I? want to look for just like maybe a little more color possibly so at the very end I have to clean up my space so that I can get a good feel for what this looks like <laughs> otherwise it's just too distracting <clears throat> all right you know what I I like this but I feel like I have to look at a couple more options just just to make sure so i'll be right back okay i've zoomed you guys in a little bit closer here to take a look i found a couple more options i love that the shape of this leaf covers um a lot more of this background here and I just like that it's kind of a you know it's like mimicking the circle but I don't love the color because although it is color <laughs> it's not what I would consider like you know pop of color I, I actually like this one a lot too I wish that I had more stuff that filled in um, towards the bottom too 
I don't know, that's just not how leaves work, I guess. So I have a lot of this shape leaves too. This is actually, um, these are actually my lessons for fodder challenge, which are free um, if you sign up for fodder challenge. So if you wanna know how to paint those, they are, a, I have a free tutorial on those, but I like the pink color of this one. I don't like the white in, in between. So what I've decided to do, I'll just paint another one, okay? So I have a scrap piece of watercolor paper here. Um, I have some watercolors. There's a good place to set that up. A little bit of water and just real quick, I'm going to paint up a, I'm gonna paint two. So this color is this fluorescent pink from Sennelier is what I used. I'm gonna mix that in with whatever is on this palette here. I like to, I like to mix my own colors, even if it's just a little dab of something else. I could get it a bit darker. So I liked the size and shape of that leaf. I'm going to try and do something similar, but I am, oh, can't see me, but I'm going to fill in the whole leaf. This one might be a bit too wide. Maybe I'll just have to trim it down. This is why I like to have a lot of these watercolors, watercolor fussy cuts on hand so I can choose. And also why I like to make them, I feel like that should be the top. So I'm gonna put the stem like that. It's upside down. Um, why I like to make them in different colors, not, not just green, even though leaves are green. Um, right now, a green leaf is not what I want. So had I made a bunch more of the different color leaves, I like to use purple a lot and make purple leaves because like you could, I think you could see a purple leaf in nature. Um, but even even if you don't, it's fine. I just I just like to use the colors that will look nice in my art and will be useful to me. So let me try again for a little bit skinnier leaf over here. So you get a little, a quick watercolor tutorial here where I'm literally just putting some paint onto paper. I'm not doing anything fancy because I actually need a very simple, simple shape. I've got a lot going on in the background. So, oops, sorry. Again, I'm not on camera. Sorry about that. So I'm just gonna wait for these to dry and then cut them out and then use that as my focal point. Okay, so here's the two new leaves that I made and one's a little skinny, which is nice if you just want a little pop of color. And this one is nice and thick, which I love actually. So I'm going to choose this one. I did add just some lines with my Uniball Signo pen. Um, putting the white on the watercolor 
works really well for me as long as the watercolor is completely dry. So um, I know, I think some people have mentioned that they get, they get like bleeding or some other weird things happening, but it seems to work out really well for me. So I just draw on it like with any ballpoint pen. And I'm gonna just glue that. I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna use a different glue. I'm gonna, I like to use this one, this art glitter glue for heavier paper, like watercolor paper. I don't know what kind of paper. I know this is watercolor paper, but I don't know what brand this is. I just picked it up off of one of my scraps. It is a lighter weight than your typical one. Um, you can find watercolor pads that are like 90 pound watercolor at Michael's. The Artist Loft brand has it. And that's what I typically use, but I've tried other brands too. Like there's other ones out there. There's, um, gosh, I can't. Fabriano has one. Arches has one if you want to buy a big sheet. So, or any, any weight. These are the thicker weight. No, I think these are thinner. Yeah. So, um. That's what I used there, but any watercolor paper will work for that. I'm just going to add a little bit more just to, just to add some more of that pink. I feel like it just needs a little more of that, of that hot pink. And I feel like Somewhere over here, I need to do a little bit more. Okay, that's it. That's, that's all for pop of color. So I hope you enjoyed making this page with me. I'm gonna, let, let me fold it like this so you can just see just the page by itself. So that's not too distracting over here, but I do love how this all this color over here contrasts with this and then I could just like write a little quote or something on this page every time I make one page I always feel like I have to keep going and do the full spread but today I'm done here um I really hope that you enjoyed watching and that you followed along um if you made something and you want to put a photo of it on Instagram, I would love to see it. The best way is to tag me. I'm at Tif Tiffany Simply Sharp on Instagram. Um, if you want to know about any of my other classes or where el else you can find me, you can always go to my website and that is tiffanysimplysharp.com and you can see you know, the classes that I teach. You can find information about fodder school there. I have a shop where I sell some things. So there's just a lot of things there if you want to look me up. Um, but yeah, thanks again to Meg for inviting me for Junk Journal July. And I hope you have fun. Okay, bye.